All right, let's talk about the two most popular safari destinations in Southern Africa, such as South Africa and Namibia. We're going to start with Namibia. Namibia is a great destination for the first time hunter, for the fifth safari goer. It's a real great destination. There's a lot of opportunity there. It's the only place you can hunt the Damara Dick Dick. You can hunt cheetahs, non-exportable into the United States. Um, there's a truly amazing opportunity in Namibia. You have places such as the Waterberg and the Caprivi that offer great wild Africa hunting for buffalo and all the amazing game um, found in those areas. Uh, the hunt, hunting the Caprivi is an amazing opportunity. We hunted above water west in 2016 and there was days that we'd probably see upwards of 200 elephants, a couple hundred buffalo. You know, some days we'd only see 50 buffalo, 60 buffalo. Um, but there was days we'd see over 100 of each buffalo and elephant. It's a truly amazing place. You're hunting the floodplains leading into the Okavanga Delta uh, along the Okavanga River. And it's an amazing opportunity. If you get a chance to go there, I highly recommend it. One day I will own a place in Namibia. Um, that's my kind of my dream goal is to own a place there. It'll be a, a great safari destination for you and your family. Great place to take the wife and kids. Uh, you fly into Windhoek and then from there you kind of disperse. Sometimes you'll have to take a smaller... Um, internal flight, charter flight, which we did to the Caprivi, or on a safari we did in 2009 to Namibia, we just drove um, a few short hours outside of Windhoek and we were in um, great hunting opportunity and great hunting areas there. Uh, Namibia is a very um, wide open country. There's a lot of great game ranching, a lot of great wide open free range areas as well. There's a little over um, 318,000 square miles of country in Namibia. Population is just a little over two and a half million people. Um, it's actually very low density of people compared to some other countries that you get. Um, and so it's a great opportunity, it's a great experience, very safe. A lot of uh, malaria free areas, risk free areas for malaria. Uh, it's just a great experience for the family to go and enjoy a safari in Namibia. Like I said, you get species such as the Damara Dick Dick that's only found there. You have the Hartman's Mountain Zebra. You have opportunity to hunt cheetah, non exportable in the United States. You're going to be hunting some of the biggest skims buck. Um, found in Namibia. Some of the biggest Kalahari springbuck are found in Namibia. As I've mentioned before, great kudu hunting, great buffalo hunting in the select areas such as the Waterberg and the Caprivi. Um, it's been known for its big elephants throughout um, history. Um, probably the best hunting you can find for elephants which would be in the Caprivi. Um, that goes into the Botswana, Okavanga Delta. You're hunting that massive corridor of elephants through there and uh, it's just a truly amazing opportunity to be able to hunt uh, that country you get the, a little mixture between the Livingston and the Cape Eland um, in the northern parts and the southern parts you have varieties there and it's just a true destination for the first time safari hunter or the fifth time safari hunter looking for a new adventure different species and so on and so forth next we're going to talk about South Africa South Africa is probably the most popular country when it comes to international hunting or safari hunting. It's the one that's most publicized, there's the most opportunity there, and the hunting industry in South Africa has boomed over the years. We did a whole video on how the hunting industry has helped South Africa, the jobs it's created, and all that, and it's a truly amazing place to go. You're gonna be hunting places. The country's, the country's big. South Africa is just shy of 500,000 square miles of land. Um, you ranging from the Northern Cape, the Eastern Cape, you're going to go up through the Free State, all the way up into Mapumalanga. You've got Limpopo, KwaZulu-Natal. You've got lots of different provinces, and the hunting varies from each and every one of those. You have select species, such as the Cape Bushbuck, that's going to run down along the coastline from the, the West Cape all the way through the Eastern Cape up into KwaZulu-Natal in that province area. And then you're going to have your Limpopo Bushbuck that come down in the Limpopo province and into the Mapumalanga area. Um, it's an amazing opportunity. Like I said, there's a very variety of game. You got different species kind of inhabited in certain areas of the country. It's a truly amazing experience and you cannot just experience South Africa on one safari. It's going to take you multiple safaris across the entire country to experience the diversity of the country and the game found in it. Speaking of like population, when I talked about Namibia and how their population is just a little over two and a half million for the 300, a um, little over 300 million or 300,000 square miles of land. South Africa has almost 500,000 square miles of, of land, but their population is just shy of 60 million people. Like that's a lot of people in that country. Um, 
You're not going to find as many remote wild areas as you would in Namibia. There's some great areas surrounding the Kruger Park area that are some pretty wild areas. You're going to get a lot of free range stuff throughout KwaZulu Natal, down to the Eastern Cape, stuff like that. Great areas, big areas. You know, and then there's big enclosed fenced areas throughout the country that are, you know, 30,000 acres, 40,000 acres, 50,000 acres, which is a lot of acreage. And uh, it truly offers uh, an experience for the hunter to go over there and experience. Like I said, you're going to. You're gonna to have to hunt a lifetime pretty much in South Africa to experience all of it. I have yet to experience all of South Africa. My goal is to experience all of it and hunt throughout the country. Um, such as like there's different species such as like the Orbeez, the Clip Springers, and the different species that are found throughout the country kind of variating. You know if you look back at old Kingham books and um, Princeton books of animals you're gonna see different species throughout the country. Now record books don't acknowledge them but it'd be kind of cool to be say I hunted the clip springer here and the clip springer here and kind of see the variations in between them as Princeton and those guys did when they were cataloging these animals a long time ago. It'd be super cool to experience that. Um, within South Africa you're gonna have a variety of camps. There's some tented custom safari camps you know such as like the old West Africa and East Africa style safari tented camps but a lot of it is really nice lodging. You're going to have swimming pools at a lot of lodges. It's going to be a really great place to take the family. Um, sometimes it's more remote, kind of up in the mountains. You're going to have, you know, smaller housing type stuff, like more one-on-one -on -one personal stuff, but it still makes for a great experience. And by far the, the worst Africa camp beats most of the best North America camps here. And so it's better than staying in a hotel down in hunts to be able to stay in the bush and experience the, the proper safari camp and whatnot. You know, during the pioneering era of pioneer era of South Africa, most of the game was actually ravaged. A lot of it was, you know, slaughtered, a lot of it was killed for meat, hides and so forth, such as like the Cape Eel in a lot of areas, they were almost decimated because they were easy to run down on horses and didn't really put up a fight. And so, you know, when when the, um hunting became a thing and when being able to, for the landlords being able to own the species and own the game and have the rights to them became a thing. It brought a higher value than a lot of the the, the sheep and goats that were used in the cattle. Um, so in the 1970s, um, South Africa kind of flipped the switch from decimating game to rebuilding it, and ever since then it's flourished. People have seen the value of game. They've brought species back, such as like the black wildebeest, which were damn near decimated. You know, you have the orby on the coast. It's just like animals like that that have flourished and came back through hunting in South Africa and they've changed, they've turned over so many hundreds of thousands of acres of unproductive um, farming land into hunting grounds which has been an extreme beneficial to habitat for wildlife and everything else, you know, fauna flora wise and it saved a lot of different species even, you know, throughout plant and wildlife. You know, and speaking of like the terrain and habitat, like I said, you're going to the terrain and habitat varies. You're going to have the Drakensberg Mountains. You're going to have the, the Winterberg Mountains. You're going to have mountains that do get, see snowfall during the winter. And then you're going to have coastline. Then you're going to have vast deserts, which you're going to get like up into the northern Cape, going in towards the Kalahari. It, the terrain varies from play, from region to region. It's, it's a great experience to go see all these different areas and learn about it because it's very different than hunting here in North America. Okay guys, in this subject video on Safari 101, I want to talk about the country of Zambia. Uh, I hunted Zambia back in 2018 and found it to be an amazing country. Unfortunately, between um, since then, there's been a little bit of area allocation mess ups and some holding back. So there's some blocks that haven't been quite um, given over to people yet. And so that's up in the air on some of the, the future, some of the areas. But to me, Zambia is a great place. It's a great country. It's, you know, the next step up from like the starter safaris and like the Zimbabwe stuff because it's going into the next price pack, you know, price range. Um, it's getting up there towards the cost of Tanzania, not quite as up there, but it's it's getting expensive. Um, but it's rightfully so. It's a great opportunity. You're going to be enjoying some true wild Africa. Um, man, when we were there, I was there in 2018. I was there for four, or 11 days, I think is what I was there total. Um, was planned to be a 14 day safari and was done by day eight or nine and was just like, I'm just going to spend more money if I stay here. So we hit, I got out of there. Um, you know, it's a great place. It's a team with game. I think we saw lion almost every day. This is wild, truly wild Africa. And this is free range lions in the daylight. Um, we actually saw lions at night one time in the headlights and that was it. But during the time, the rest of the time we saw them in the day, um, several males, lots of females. Um, I saw my, um, I've seen my first 
wild dog chase, which they were chasing um, an Impala, and you know that thing was toast at the end of it. Uh, we've seen a female leopard during the day, seen elephants almost daily. You know, the only member of the big five that we didn't see was an el or was a rhino, and uh, actually the only member of the danger seven we didn't see was around because we'd see crocs and hippos every day. You know, like I said, we saw a lion, leopard, obviously buffalo, lots of buffalo. We hunted two buffalo. Um, I shot my biggest bull there at 41 inches. Um, shot a monster of a cat on day three as well, a leopard. Shot a great big hippo, um, a, a world-class puka with a bow. The, the game was everywhere. There was lots of game. It was truly an amazing experience to go experience that. And, uh, you know, being on Lord of the Pond Day, it was an amazing opportunity to just experience Wild Africa in a different setting. You know, done Tanzania 21 day and went to Zambia and just, I knew it was going to be Wild African, but it was super cool to be able to experience that. You know, we delivered the two buffalo that we shot, we delivered them to separate villages. It's a truly remarkable place and there's some key species that you can only find there. You know, you're going to have the Black Lechway and the Kafui Flats, the Kafui Flats Lechway there. You're going to have um, your uh, Cookson's Hartebeest. The Cookson's Wildebeest, I do apologize, and they are only found in the Luwingo Valley of Zambia. Um, and then you're going to have species like the Sable, which you know, Zambia is the closest to Angola where the giant sable lived and some of the biggest record book sable come out of uh, Zambia. Truly world class sable. And then you're going to have your Zambezi Sitatunga which is only found in Zambia as well. So there's some key species that you can only find in Zambia and there's other key species that are kind of bouncing between other countries. And so it's really neat and you really unique experience. Um, I went in May, super green, loved it, the weather was perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better experience. So if you're looking to venture out, you've done Zimbabwe, you've done South Africa, Namibia, or you know, you've done one of those countries and you're wanting to go do a truly wild Africa safari, I, I suggest, you know, go try Zambia. It's a great place and you know, nothing wrong with either Zimbabwe or Namibia because they offer some great free range stuff and parts of South Africa as well. But you're going to go into a country that, like I said, there's some specific, specific species that only live there and you can only find them there. You know, it's awesome awesome opportunity you're going to experience a different country and that's my big thing it's like you know there's a lot of places you can go and hunt the same species or hunt different species in the same country but why not go to the country next door that offers the same and sometimes if not more species um, to experience that opportunity in that country because I find it really cool just to go collect flags I collect flags from all the places I've been and I think Zambia was a, a truly amazing opportunity I, I'm going to go back there someday for sure um, it was there's those, obviously those species that I listed that are only found there. I didn't collect any of those. Um, I want to go back and experience that. They have big choby bushbuck there as well, which I haven't collected. Um, there's just a lot of opportunity, and you can kind of cover the whole country searching for those different species. Like I've talked in the specialty species list, um, you know, you're not going to just go there in one spot and have one camp to hunt at all. You're going to have to travel a little bit and see the country. You know, going from the Kafu Flats all the way up into the top corner of it. You know, it's just there's different game found in different places and I think it's super super necessary to go do these things like to be able to experience if you can afford it and if you have a true love for Africa I just highly suggest you go explore these different countries and explore the opportunities that Africa holds for you all right moving on to another country we're gonna talk about Tanzania Tanzania is to me probably the holy grail of Africa safari if you could only do one safari in your entire life and could swing it Tanzania would be the place there's probably 21 to 23 different species you can collect throughout the country. You're going to travel a lot, but it's going to be damn worth it and damn exciting. You got, you know, the Salute Game Reserve. You're going to have stuff up towards Maasai Land where you're going to be seeing all those big migration type herds, you know. And then you got the Rungwa. You got many different areas that hold different key species. You got your, you know, your Harvey's Red Diker that's only found in Tanzania. Well, only huntable right now in Tanzania. And there, um, you got your species such as Roberts and Thompson Gazelle that are only huntable in the Sciland. In different areas, not all operators offer those up two species. Then you're going to have your Southern Garanook and your Southern Grants Gazelle found there as well. Your um, Fringer Oryx found in the Sciland that's only hunted in there. You're going to have your uh, White Bearded Wildebeest again only hunted in Tanzania. Uh, like, like I said, there's a lot of species that are only found there. There's some great hunting and elsewhere. Um, for different species that are found, you know, all over, they probably have some of the best uh, genetics for buffalo. You know, that's where all the world record class stuff had been picked up during the day. You know, coming out of the Ngorogoro Crater and all that stuff out of Kenya. Um, there's amazing genetics for elephant, lion, monster cats. 
Um, it's properly managed. The guys that have those big areas and have been there long enough, such as you know Harpy Bra, Rungo Game Stars, they've had these areas and managed them for a long time. And they've really honed in on you know building the best hunting areas possible. You know, and you're not going to go to a camp in Tanzania at least with a quality outfitter and have a, a horrible camp. It's going to be a five star operation. You're going to have the classic safari tents, but they're wonderful tents, fully kitted with you know in-house bath, all that good stuff. You're going to have beds comfortable kings probably or queen size beds you know full amenities probably a swimming pool there you know a nice lookout area with the, the fireplace it's just amazing the opportunities you can have in Tanzania plus the amount of game you will see is um, second to none when we hunted the Rungwa game reserve back in 2010 we seen a ton of elephants nothing was actually that we found that was legal there but we saw a lot of elephants a lot of buffalo uh, there was lots of lions in that area lots of leopards uh, we just seen a ton of game. There's a few species we didn't weren't able to collect while we were there, unfortunately. But you know, it always gives reason to go back again. Uh, and like I said, there's key species that you can get in these places that you can't get elsewhere. And key experiences like the Salu Game Reserve. It's one of the I think it's the oldest game reserve that there is. And that would be a cool thing just to say you went and hunted it. I know it's went downhill since you know back you know in the early days, but. Um, I think it'd be cool just to say you went to the Slough Game Reserve and you know you're gonna have you know your your Roosevelt sable that are getting up into the Slough Game Reserve there, which are the different subspecies of sable, and you know it's just an amazing place for you to be able to experience it, which I think is very cool and uh, just something that people can go and enjoy and experience. You know, you got different opportunities. You got parks that you can go visit while you're there, which I think is really sweet to have the diversity of you know doing a hunting safari and then a cool photographic trip as well. There's just a lot of different opportunities, you know, and the Maasai Mara is close by, you know, and then Gorgo Crater, all these amazing parks are next, you know, right next door to it where, you know, world famous elephants and world famous lions are at and you can go take really cool photos and video of them. And there's also a ton of different other experiences, you know, you got Mount Kilimanjaro right next door, you know, where you can go climb and hike that, which I think would be cool. Um, super, super awesome experiences. You got just Arusha National Park, which we visited, which was teeming with game, you know, super lush and green. It was like a tropical environment, which I thought was super sweet, where we went into the park at. And then they have, you know, the coastline stuff where there's all sorts of, I was watching videos on these like little bungalows that are out in the water there. It's just like there's a lot of different opportunities for you to experience in Tanzania. I think it's a, it's a first class operation. If you have one safari that you can do, pick Tanzania. And if you're looking for a place to go experience hands down true East Africa hunting, I would say Tanzania is the place for you to go visit and experience. You won't go wrong. Let's talk about Zimbabwe. Uh, Zimbabwe, like I've said a bunch, it's a, a, real, a really reasonable, affordable country to go to for a classic safari type stuff when you're breaking into the dangerous game. You know, now obviously lions are still going to be expensive no matter where you go, but leopards are fairly more reasonable. Buffalo and elephants seem to be fairly reasonable there. You can still do tuskless cow hunts um, at an affordable rate there as well. It's, um, you know, your first stepping stones in those true wild remote parts of Africa. And I think it's a great starting point and a great price point for people. You know, there's limited plains game there as far as species go and variety, but it's, you know, it's a great place. There's lots of big cootie that have been taken out of there, big chubby bush buck, um, some key species, but it's a place for you to go and have a good hunt. It's a great buffalo destination. You have, you have probably seen a ton of videos, you know, between Craig Bodden and tracks across Africa of all these Zimbabwe buffalo hunts. You know, truly world-class buffalo hunts, big buffalo, um, good cat hunting. Uh, it's a place, you know, I've personally been there. My dad went there um, and hunted elephant and unsuccessful, unfortunately. Um, that's part of hunting, you know, it's, it's not called killing, it's called hunting for a reason. And, uh, you know, I think for the price and affordability, Zim Zimbabwe is probably your best bet as far as getting your feet wet into that wild Africa stuff. And it's a place that I want to go visit. I'd like to go do a Tuscus LA and a Chobe Bush buck there in the near future just to, you know, say I've experienced that. And, not just to say it, just to go experience it. You know, I like to experience it. And like I've said, I want to try to hunt different species in different places and even the same species in different places just to get the feel of how the local hunters and local PHs do it and how the train is. And I think it'd be super fun. Um, you know, another key species there is a sharp scrice book. You know, that's a, that's a key species that's really relatively available in Zim. Again, you got to make sure you're ahead of the curve and tell your PH ahead of time that you want that license. 
but you know that's a species if you're looking for like the tiny tan and all the small critters sim seems like a great place for it you know there's some stuff on the borderline you know of other countries where there's you know you can probably get a, a sharps up and towards uh, Zambia but it's very rare compared to what you can get in Zimbabwe so it's just kind of making sure that you know you tick the boxes on things while you're there to experience it and make sure you let your page know ahead of time that you want that permit um, lots of great opportunities in Zim. I've had a lot of buddies go to Zim and like I said I'm looking forward to my first trip to Zimbabwe and after that I'll be able to give you my hands-on experience and hands-on knowledge but I have lots of great pH friends from Zimbabwe you know like Daniel Moore, Guav Johnson, these guys you know and then you got peaches like Buzz Charlton, um, you know, the York guys, you know, and so it's just there's a lot of experienced people in Zimbabwe because I think Zimbabwe does have the hardest pH licensing system that there is. So it takes, you know, a lot more work to obtain the pH license and you're really tried and true when you get one. Um, so that should be a badge of honor for anyone that has a Zimbabwe pH license, you know, as they did it. And, you know, if they're a reputable outfitter, they should be one worth going with. Uh, let's talk about Mozambique. Mozambique, I have yet to be there, have yet to been there, and that's one of those key countries I want to go tick off. There's a lot of actually different places without or within Mozambique that I want to experience. I want to do the sand forest hunt for the red diker and the Sunni, and then obviously do the buffalo hunts down there towards the coastline, um, and then obviously move up and do like the the Roosevelt Sable and the Nyasa wildebeest up in there, up and towards the northern part of the country, experience that different stuff. You know, you're going to have great buffalo hunting there. I mean, you look at Paul um, Paul Stone. He does some fabulous, fantastic buffalo hunting there. You see it all the time on Instagram and, you know, throughout the trade show season. You talk to him and he does world-class buffalo hunting in Mozambique. So I think it would be really cool to go experience that. And like I said, there's a few key species found throughout the country. Um, you know, there seems like there's a few, a handful of really top-notch outfitters there. They kill big bush buck in areas. Um, talking to my friends that have done it they've had nothing but good things to say about it they're going they've went back two or three times so it seems like a great country to go visit um and to me like i'll have more um first on hands-on knowledge with the country when i get a chance to go to it i know you know a lot of that was you know during the pioneer days and the brush during the bush war it got extremely wiped out but it's came back and due to hunting and game management areas and guys going in and you know, doing anti-poaching and building back up the game population. So I think it's really helped within the country of Mozambique, you know, the hunting industry for sure. Um, unfortunately, still you can't export the elephants from there, but, um, you know, other than that, it's a great destination, I think, for most, most critters, and it's one of those that I want to truly check off my list as well. All right, so now let's head on Ethiopia. Ethiopia has probably been one of my greatest safari destinations I've been to. I've been to it twice and hunted three different areas. I've hunted the Bali Mountains for Mountain Yala, Menelix Bushbuck, and a few other key species found there. And then we did the Omo Valley, and then we went to the Sala. Um, and it was an amazing, amazing experience both times, two different trips. Uh, we hunted with uh, Ethiopian Rift Valley Safaris, which was pretty much the pioneering safari company within Ethiopia. Uh, Nasus Rusos is like the holder of the torch for Ethiopia hunting. He's been there the entire time. He has the current world record, uh, Mount Nyala, and he has flagshipped the country and pretty much kept hunting alive in Ethiopia as long as he's been alive. And so then his son, Jason Russos, you know, both are um, SCI Professional Hunter of the Year Award recipients. They've done a great job there in obtaining great areas and keeping them, you know, flourishing with game, keeping them, you know, from locals coming in and tearing everything out, using it for agriculture and cattle and stuff like that. So it's been a key thing for Ethiopian wildlife is the hunting industry. And um, unfortunately, you know, Ethiopia is a place that it's fairly expensive, but you got to pay for all your trophy fees up front, no matter what it is. And the Menelik's Bushbuck, they love, you know, they, because, you know, Menelik was one of their emperors and rulers. They uh, named the Menelik's Bushbuck after him, and they have a high price tag set on that Bushbuck, but it's a very beautiful Bushbuck. I was able to get one in um, the, the Bali Mountains, like I said, and so... It's an amazing, amazing country. You know, you see on TV, it's just skinny people, disease, sickness, you know, poverty stricken. But in a lot of these areas, it's really far from the truth. Now, maybe down in the Danakil Desert, it's pretty poverty stricken because there's not a lot of agriculture there. But, you know, like where you hunt in the Mountain Yala, it's almost overran with agriculture. There's people that are, you know, planting 
crops and livestock everywhere. It's like, you know, they're almost overtaking all the mountain, all the habitat. You know, luckily and thankfully that Jason and his dad are there to be able to preserve, preserve it and protect it for us for future generations to go and see. And so there's a little different picture that you see from the normal media to what a first-hand experience is. Um, there's other places in Ethiopia that I still have not to been yet. I still need to go hunt the Abyssinian Greater Kudu, the Abyssinian Bushbuck, um, Summerings Gazelle, uh, the Northern Garanook, two different species of dick dick still to hunt there. Um, it's just the diversity of game in Ethiopia is incredible. You know, it could take someone three to four safaris to, or even more to even collect all the different species within the country. So it's a it's a place that if it's on, if you're looking to venture out and do more hunting in Africa, I suggest Ethiopia looking in that country. And again, the mountain y'all is just like a, a Rocky Mountain elk hunt to me. It's, you know, you're in the mountains, you're glass and you're searching, you're looking and it's super thick and you're getting to get that one shot. And, you know, Jason and them have done a real good job. And in the past few years, they've killed some monster mountain yellow bulls and monster mentalux bushbuck. Um, one thing I have yet to get from the, the forest area of Ethiopia is a, a giant forest hawk. So that's one animal I need to go back and try to obtain myself and probably do another mountain yellow, another mentalux bushbuck too as well, because I just love it so much and can do that every year if I could. All right, let's talk about another country that is probably like number one on my go-to list, which is Uganda. You have, uh, Uganda is a very rich wildlife um, country because you have so many different species. You got Nile bushbuck, you got East African bushbuck, you know, you got your cob, you got your Sesi Island Sitatunga, you got your um, East Africa Sitatunga, you got all these different species there. It's just amazing. You got Nile buffalo, and it's just like, the last four or five years, you've seen a lot of people traveling to Uganda doing these safaris, and it's really cool to watch and see. That makes me super like eager to go experience it for myself because you know you got Sudanese roan, Sudanese orbi. Like I could go on and on about these different species found there, and it's just an amazing diversity of game. Um, you know, a lot of the hunts are taking place when other hunts aren't. You know, I see a lot of guys going to a safari in. Um, Uganda between like November and March or November and April like I see a lot of that happen which is cool because then a lot of other places that slowed down safari industries wise you know here in North America there's very few hunts during that time as well so it's a great time to go experience something and go see it differently um, so it's a big big um, hit list place for me to go experience and see and like I said before once I go experience it I'll be able to come back and give you a more in-depth video on it but it's another country that I've had lots of friends go to and they've had nothing but great things to say about it and they've went two or three times and they've had wonderful safaris so it's a place that I want to go experience you know it was pretty much shut down for a long time and then reopened I believe back in 2010 2012 I'll double check my facts on that um, and so, you know, it's a kind of a relatively newly opened country to hunting and it's super, super awesome that this, you know, that the country allowed hunting to come back because it's obviously brought the value of game higher and made it flourish in the areas that you can hunt. All right, so I'm going to continue with the huntable, huntable countries within Africa. Um, guys, you got Botswana. Botswana used to be a really magnificent um, hunting destination, you know, when it was Botswana land. And then over the years, due to political stuff and government stuff, it's really shrunken the hunting industry down. Areas have closed, species have closed, and it's really kind of put a damper on the, the safari industry within Botswana. I mean, it's still got a great industry as far as, you know, elephant hunting goes now that it's reopened and running. Um, probably one of the best places to hunt elephant. It has been, you know, it has been choked down as well because other areas have been shut down within the country and turned into photographic safari areas. Um, again, like I said, species have been shut down, such as lion, lion hunting was probably one of the best, uh, Botswana was probably one of the best lion hunting countries back in when it was open. There is private, a few small private game farms, or this private game farm industry is small. Um, some great hunting opportunities there, uh, but it's really become limited within Botswana, sadly. And so it's a great, a great country to look at, but it's not the, the country that it used to be for the hunting industry. Um, moving up through Africa, we've talked about Uganda, we've talked about Zimbabwe, Zambia, Tanzania, we've talked about Ethiopia. Uh, we're going to kind of divert into some countries you know, that are more specialty safaris. People that are looking not for their first, second, or third. This is probably like really, you know, into your safari hunting career, countries like Chad. Chad is open, operating, offers a wide variety of species available, such as the Western Greater Kudu, which is probably the true gray ghost of Africa, which I've talked about in the Glamour Game video. Um, 
you know, those are hunted there. You're going to have other species that are found in uh, Chad as well. You have your species like the Red Fronted Gazelle, the Western Run, the Luell Hartebeest, the Bullhorn Reedbuck, the Desert Warthog. You're going to have the Orby. You're going to have baboon species. You're going to have um, the Golden Jackals there. You have especially monkey species called the Paddis Monkey there. You have Vervet Monkeys there. You have a wide variety of animals that you can hunt in the country of Chad, but again, it's a specialized country for specialized safaris. It's not some place that the first time safari hunter is going to go to. Um, it's going to be a very hot safari. It's very limited to a few operators running that country, which is good. It, it keeps the good guys there, and it's not being overran by a bunch of different operators, which is great. Um, to me, I'm, I'm looking to go to Chad soon because that's a country that I want to visit because I want to hunt every open country within Africa to hunt in and I want to hunt some of this key species such as the western greater kudu there and amongst other things like the paddis monkey. Um, Chad is a very specialized country like I've said. It's a, it's a destination for the true safari hunter to go to and explore. Next we're going to move over into CAR. CAR has been a country that has been up and down throughout the years through civil unrest. You know you've had rebel wars, you've had guerrilla warfare happening there over the years. Um, it used to be the prime destination to go do a full big bag safari with Bongo and Lord Derby included. Um, those are like 28 day safaris because in, in CAR you're hunting areas that are, you have, you know, forest strips inspired with savanna. Um, it's great, it's a, it's a very unique country because you do have areas that you can hunt Lord Derby and Bongo within the same areas. Like I said, you have forest strips um, with in between that savanna areas which is really unique because you know in Cameroon you don't get that you have to go to true so true savanna area and true forest area but in um, say are you're gonna have species you know similar to Cameroon you're gonna have your your savanna buffalo you're gonna have your Lord Derby your bongo your yellowback diker your blue dikers um, your giant forest hog you're gonna have leopard you're going to have other forest species like your bay diker, your peter's diker, your, your white belly diker, your black fronted dikers. And again, like not all areas have the diversity to where you can hunt both in the same spot. There's a, there's a select few areas that offer that. Um, and today it's very limited and very hard because of all the civil unrest and stuff. But you're going to primarily have two different areas similar to Cameroon. But again, the option and the opportunity has been there in the past to where there's areas close enough to each other that are inspersed between forest and savanna hunting. Um, in the savanna, you're going to have, like I said, your, your Lord Derby Eland, your Western Roan, your savanna buffalo. You're going to have your um, Luel Hartebeest, your Central Africa Cobb, your Orby your corrigum, sorry, your corrigum, you're going to have your warthog, your bush pig, and your red river hog. Um, like I said, there's areas that do come close enough together that you can be possibly hunting all that at the same camp. Again, in today's hunting, it is very finite and limited because of all the civil unrest throughout the years. So just plan ahead. Um, Kiwan LaFol, he has taken over his dad's operation, LaFol Safaris. Um, they are probably one of the oldest operating co companies within CAR. He has grown up doing it and they've started off their season in 2024 with a great bongo already. Um, they are taking some of the biggest bongo in CAR amongst many other species. So if you guys are looking to, to venture to CAR, get a hold of Kewen. He is a, a great young man and like I said, the company has been there for a long time. He's grown up in the bush of Africa hunting these amazing species in CAR. So give him a call if you're looking to expand into your CAR hunting. All right, now we're going to go to Cameroon. I've personally been to Cameroon. I went to the forest zone, and that hunt is, the forest hunts are some of the, the toughest hunts you'll do mentally because you can't see very far. It's humid. You're always bending over. You know, you're in tight areas. It's thick. Um, in the forest zones, you're going to have your bay diker, your peter's diker, your, you're going to have your bongo, your forest sitatunga, your forest elephants. Um, Species like that that are found there, you're going to encounter chimpanzees and gorillas that are not huntable, but it's a super sweet experience. You're going to spend time driving the roads, checking tracks, looking for bongo tracks in the morning to go hunting. Um, hope you're going to find a big solitary bull track. You kind of want a, a four-finger track is how they kind of go about it. And that's how you're going to do the same thing in CAR when it comes to whether you're doing Lord Derby or bongo. It's getting, those are primary track and safaris. And sometimes you'll get lucky and see one from the vehicle, but most of the time you're going to be spending time tracking. And then the other animals of opportunity will be whether you're on the tracks and you bump into something by chance or see it from the road as well. 
um, and then pursue it on foot that way. In, in Cameroon, you're gonna, like I said, you have the four zones and the savanna zones. The same species primarily exists through both CAR and Cameroon. You're gonna have your Lord Derby Eland, your Corrigum, your Luel Hartebeest, your um, Borho Rebuck, you're gonna have your savanna buffalo, your western roan, your harness bushbuck. Species of that are found in the savanna of Cameroon. Um, those are two entirely different safaris, southern and northern. Southern being the forest, northern being the savanna hunts. And it's a great, it's a great experience and a great hunting opportunity for the safari hunter that is looking to expand into Africa, hunt the key species. And again, these are countries that are not on the first time safari hunters list. These are specialty safaris and I've went a full video on that separately. So we're just covering the huntable countries. Then you're going to have countries that are always up and down. Currently right now, they're not hunting right now, such as Burkina Faso and Benin. Great countries, offer a lot of the key species that are also found in Cameroon, but offers you an experience to go somewhere else and experience some different stuff in terrain. Uh, those are countries that are not unhuntable right now. Then you're going to have a country that's huntable right now for the western Lord Derby Elan, which is Senegal, very limited safari operation there, but there is an opportunity to go there and experience that and hunt a different species classified through SCI and all these other organizations of the western Lord Derby Elan. You'll still pick up you know, your, your savannah buffalo and your roan and stuff like that within Senegal, but it's primarily a safari for that, that western Lord Derby Elan or western giant Elan. Other countries that are always up and down is Ghana, Libya. Um, those are really specialty safaris. Those are places that are, people are going to go and do like your diker hunting. That's all that's really found in those countries is dikers. You're going to be spending a lot of time like at night hunting with a headlamp on. And like I said, those are countries that are constantly up and down whether they're huntable or not. So check again. You know, I know if you're listening to this and you're looking to go on those hunts, you're pretty much a dedicated safari hunter and you're going to have the connections to learn whether they're open or not. Finally, we're going to end things with the Congo. The Congo is um, a primarily forest safari. It's a similar species that you're going to find in the forest of Cameroon and the forest of CAR. You know, you're know, you going to have your forest Sitatunga, your dwarf forest buffalo, you're going to have your bongo, your yellowback diker, species like that. Um, it's a country that can be tough to hunt. Very, the success rating is a lot lower than Cameroon on certain species. I feel like you know, through friends that have went, through outfitters I've talked to, there's a higher chance of forest Sitatunga and the quality of forest Sitatunga seems to be bigger coming out of the Congo when you're lucky. I've had a buddy that went over there. We had a podcast with him. He did two separate safaris. I think he's over like 20, 28 days into the Congo and didn't pull the trigger once. So that just, you know, it's hunting. Hunting is hunting everywhere, especially when you get in these forest remote areas of Africa where there's lots of game, but the visibility is very limited. A lot of the game comes only out at night. It's weather dependent. You need rain in the forest zones for the tracking jobs. You need rain to replenish the salt licks, to bring up the, the minerals for everything. So it's a big ordeal, whether it's gonna be successful or not based upon weather, time of, time of year, the moon phase even, stuff like that. So those are key concepts you need to look for when you're booking these forest safaris throughout these countries. A country that I almost forgot to mention was Morocco. Morocco is open now. I believe it opened up in 2022 for the first running of safaris. Maybe it was 21 for the Adad, the Barbary sheep. This is where they originally found their wild free range. They originated in Africa. And you can do also do the Barbary wild boar there as well. So it's an amazing opportunity for you guys to come and experience where Adad are from. I will be traveling to Morocco hopefully here in the near future to experience myself. I love Audad hunting in Texas, but again, I'm a big Africa fanatic and I want to hunt all these open countries for the species found there. And it goes to the, you know, it, it also helps me towards my SCI record book, Africa 80, having hunted there and taking an Audad from Africa. So I'm going to go there and explore that place and enjoy it as well. Um, like I said, a very limited safari there. It's primarily just for the Audad and the, Mar and the wild Barbary boar, which is a pig. And it's a... Uh, it's a cool experience. I've just had another buddy just go there and he was successful on several pigs and a great odd dad. So it's a true destination for the safari hunter. And if you're a sheep hunter, it might be your first place for you to go in Africa if you're a diehard sheep hunter because you're gonna be hunting the mountains of Morocco, the steep rugged country that the odd originated from. Sudan is another country that in recent years has opened back up again and allowed hunters to come in. Permits have been issued for the Nubian Ibex. Again, this is a country that is not a first time safari goer. I mean, it could actually be if you were just a diehard capra hunter looking for an ibex species because 
This is the only place that you can hunt Nuba and Ibex right now. And again, it's a place that's been war stricken throughout the years. It's not an ideal tourist destination. You're gonna be hunting in the rough, rugged mountains um, and it's gonna be hot. But again, it's another country that in recent years has become open and permits have been issued for the Nubian Ibex. So if you're a, you know, a true safari hunter that loves to travel to different places in Africa or a capra hunter species or a capra species hunter, Sudan is a place to look at and see if it is open, if permits are being issued and opportunities are available for you to go hunt there for the Nubian Ibex. So this concludes the huntable countries in Africa portion of the Safari 101 course. Again, things are constantly changing within Africa. Always keep up on things. Um, make sure you join organizations like SCI, Safari Club International, to learn whether these countries are open, what outfitters are ha operating in those areas, and stuff like that. Legality issues, import permits, export permits. Again, everything changes, so always keep up on everything. But this is just a, a portion of this course that I wanted to bring to you guys to open up your eyes to the diversity of hunting within Africa.